The guy told me that he was going to leave his wife and his daughters. He wanted to go off and live by himself, and I said, so is your wife doing something that's really pushing you away? No. Something about your daughters you don't want to be around? No. Something out there that you want to go to, like, is there another person? He said, not another person. Well, what is it pulling you away then? He said, I never got a chance to sow my wild oats. When I was a young man, I got to do just a little bit of going out and drinking with my buddies and playing pool and those kinds of things, just a little bit of it, enough to know that I really enjoyed it. But now I can't do that because I'll come in late at night. I'll be drinking. My wife's not happy with that. My kids are saying, why are you daddy? And so what I want to do is go back to get that period of my youth that I really didn't get a chance to live. And I'm going to go back and sow my wild oats and I can't do that and be married. And that's why I'm leaving my spouse. Maybe you have heard somebody say that. Maybe you've even heard your spouse say that. Maybe on occasion you yourself have even thought like that. Hmm, if that's the case, let's talk about how that happens and where it leads to. And is there a solution for it? Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Bean with Marriage Helper. I'm here with Kimberly Holmes, who is our CEO and soon-to-be psychologist when she finishes her PhD. As a matter of fact, when we're recording this, you're just about to head off for another week Mm -hmm. of study at your school, right? At the university. I am. Yes. Okay. So what about this sowing a wild old things? How common do you think it is? We don't have actual statistics, but do you think it's something that happens some or medium or a whole lot? I would guess it happens more than we think it does, especially in faith-based communities, because there's a lot of people who grow up taught, do the right thing. Don't go out and party. Don't have sex before marriage. Be, you know, don't even have sex. Well, that's what I said. Don't have sex before marriage. Um, You know, be faithful to one partner. I also remember a couple of years ago, a woman who came to the workshop and they had several kids together, had been married 20 years. And I remember her saying in one of the breakout groups, I know what the right thing to do is because I've done the right thing my whole life. And Mm. right now, I just want to not. I want to not do the right thing. I want to have fun. I want to follow this lifestyle and the allure that it seems to have. And the older I've gotten, the more friends I've had, especially kind of in this age in life where you have kids, you're kind of stuck in a rut. I think a lot of people have that desire Mm -hmm. to go and experience things they've never done before. So I would say now, whether they do it or not, Mm -hmm. you know, that that's a different issue, but the desire to, I think is incredibly common in people. Okay. Is that because they don't want to face maturity? It's like, I don't want the responsibilities of being an adult, particularly in a relationship such as a marriage. I want to be free again and have no responsibility at all. You think that's part of it? I do. I don't know that they would say they don't want to face the responsibilities. I think they would say I've been facing these Mm. And I'm just burnt out. I don't have the fun or the passion or the joy in my life anymore. Things are stale between my spouse and I. And so I just want something different. Mm -hmm. So if we think about why does a person do this? Well, we talk about this more in depth in our workshops than we can do right here. But basically, whoever or whatever is important to you has a very strong influence over what you believe to be true. And whatever you believe to be true will determine your value system. Now, your value system includes morals. It's actually much broader. Like your value system can include things like art or music or things like that. But in this particular context, let's talk about it just in terms of morality. So whoever or whatever has the most influence over me will have a strong influence on what I believe to be true. What I believe to be true actually develops my value system, maintains my value system. So sometimes, Kimberly, I think what happens in a situation like this is that whoever or whatever was that most important influence in that person's life begins to lose that position. So for example, a person might be that, that God is the most important thing in my life. And then after a while, because they don't continue to develop a relationship with that deity, they, they begin to have little thought or feelings or emotions or whatever about him whatsoever. And so eventually he drops out of first place and begins to move down. Not because of the fact that they necessarily wanted to do that. It's just there's no attention to that anymore. Or it could be that my my wife, my husband, used to be at the top, and or even under God, and had then a tremendous amount of influence 
over me. But that's faded over time. The relationship used to be strong, but now it's become mediocre or even become weak. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you start trying to figure out what changed the values, it's like what beliefs changed. And if the beliefs changed, then there's whoever is whoever or whatever is having the greatest influence over you has changed. And so uh, several years ago, I had a guy tell me he was actually an elder in his church. And he said, God has given me a second chance to be with the woman he meant for me to be with to begin with, which is my high school sweetheart. Therefore, I'm going to divorce my wife and go back and be with her. Mm-hmm. Now, you say, based on the model you just gave, Joe, he still had God at the top, mm-hmm. but he did not. His view of God had changed. So whoever he had viewed God previously mm-hmm. was not the same God he was viewing now. And so in his mind, it's not the same being. It's a different being. For the people who say that God just wants me to be happy, then they've gone to change God into a being that basically is my celestial Santa that wants me to do whatever it is I want to do so I'll be happy. Well, maybe it was my wife, maybe it was my husband, etc. There's a that that has changed. And it could be that they actually did change. And that's one reason that they don't have the influence over you that they had before. Or it could be the relationship has changed. Or it could be that someone else has climbed that ladder, either someone else or something else. So that that he or she may have been down here at one point, but it finally gets up here to the top. And that's why your belief system begins to change. So the guy who said, I want to go out and be 20 years old again and drink and carouse and come in at 2 a.m., et cetera, that had become his value system, but it's because whatever had been important to him before had lost its place and that had risen to the top. And so you can't change it by arguing morality with him. In all likelihood, you won't change it by arguing morality with him. It has to be really talking about beliefs, but as long as that person or thing has such strong hold on them, then even discussing beliefs is not going to get you anywhere. So let's say then that I have lost my view of God. Let's just say it that way. And, and it's changed because of the fact that I thought that God was going to do this. God was going to do that. God was going to make my sister well, and God let my sister die. Therefore, I've changed my view of God. And so he comes down my list, and something or someone else goes to the top. Or my, my spouse is not there for me when I need him or her. But now this other person is. And so my spouse has dropped down on the list, and that person has become the most important thing to me, having the most influence on me, which changes the belief, which changes the values. And so when they talk about going back to sow their wild oats, what they're basically saying is somehow something has changed in whatever is having the greatest influence on me. And because that change has occurred, either because I'm disappointed that what I thought was going to happen didn't, Mm -hmm. or disappointed in what I used to have has faded away, Mm -hmm. or disappointed because of the fact that some other person has had some kind of influence over me, either in the interactions we have with each other personally or by what I read in that person's book or what I see on that person's video, et cetera. And now he or she has risen to the top. And then that changes my belief system, which changes my value system. And I actually become a different person. Mm -hmm. Now, did I make that too complicated? If so, let's see if we can make it simple. No, but... I, we've talked a lot in the past and on previous episodes about when a person actually goes off and has an affair and when they've put that affair partner above, you know, marriage, faith, all of those things. But I want to, I want to stick more right now on the disappointment either of what they used to have that's no longer there of what they, or of what they thought would be that's not. Because I really want to think about the people who they just have a desire to go do this, but they're not doing it because, and I'm thinking about a situation a couple of weeks ago where someone said to me, I just wish I could leave. Like, I just wish I could go and uh, drive far away and be by myself and do whatever I wanted for a period of time because I'm just so unhappy right now, but I'm not going to do it. Because I am dedicated, I am committed, I do have a belief system that goes against that, but it doesn't change the fact that my desire to do that is still there. So those people are probably on slippery ground. According to whether they let that desire grow or not. 
So is it that the belief system changed? changes just because life circumstances change. But I would, I don't know that I would say that these people, be, these people's belief system has yet changed. They just have a temptation. That's correct. It's coming in. But I would argue that somewhere we're here on whoever or whatever is most important to you, that something is changing there. And it might be changing because what I thought that was going to occur because of this person being in my life or because of this this deity that I worship or whatever it might be mm -hmm. is not happening. And, and I'm finding myself unfulfilled. I'm finding mm -hmm. myself wanting to run away. Then I still think it's because whoever, whatever is here is not strong enough. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and it doesn't have just to do with adultery. It doesn't have to do just with affairs as you're saying it could do with anything. Mm -hmm. The so-called midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I thought if I followed this path, here's mm -hmm. what it was going to do for me. Right. That path. Right ain't happening. Mm -mm. I mean, it's not giving me that. Therefore, I'm beginning to look for what else do I want here to have the greatest influence over me? Does that begin to shake my belief? Absolutely. Does it change it? Not yet. Until the other thing or person becomes the greatest influence over you, it doesn't change your beliefs. It shakes them up. Mm -hmm. It makes you question them. And even that process will begin to change your values. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that you may not wind up going off and doing those terrible things. But now you've changed your judgment about people who do. So in that sense, my value system has changed. Oh, interesting. Okay. Interesting. So what would you say to the person who's in that? Well, before I get to that, that makes a lot of sense to me because a couple of weeks ago, I was having dinner with one of my nephews and he was talking about a situation. I honestly can't even remember what it is right now. Oh no, I do remember what it is. Um, it's the situation. <laughs> He was talking about a, a family situation of someone who was going through a lot of changes anyway. And he was being very judgmental in his, what he was saying about this person. And I was coming back and saying, but do you not understand the life that she had has had and no one has ever accepted her and she's lost every caregiver she ever had this, that, or the other. And he was saying, so do you think what she's doing is right? And I said, no, I don't think it's right. But I can see why she's led to that decision, whether I agree with it or not. But I had more compassion, but I'm also older than him. You know, I've had right. a, a series of life circumstances. So I see what you mean by that. Your values or your judgments begin to change because you have changed. Mm -hmm. So in that, if there's a person who is personally going through this, a listener who's saying, you know, and a lot of our listeners, because my spouse has left or they've said these things or they've done these things, I am tempted to just go off, to just give up, to just do this. Mm -hmm. So what is your encouragement to them to not give up a good set of beliefs and values, but also how do you know if there's some of your beliefs and values that should be challenged to help you actually become a better person and who gets to set what good is? Hmm. Those are several different questions. Yeah. I don't think we can talk about all those in the time we have left. But you see, typically what we what people will try to do is to control the values. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, if I can keep you from going where the liquor is, then you're not going to get drunk. And so I'm going to try to control the application of the values. We know that, that while that can have some short-term good effect, in the long term, they're going to find out how to get around it. Okay, so people say, okay, then, then I need to figure out how to change their beliefs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to argue, I'm going to teach, et cetera, et cetera. And you say, then I'm going to change their beliefs. Maybe. But only if you rise to a high position over here. Mm -hmm. You've got to be the person or at least one of the people that has uh, the strongest influence on them. Mm -hmm. Which means that they will have to know that you care. They will have to think that you have good sense. They will have to see you as being non-judgmental and non-biased, et cetera, et cetera. And, and so we could argue about the beliefs, but if you're not that important to me, I'm ignoring your arguments. We can try to control the, the application of the values, but if the beliefs don't change, that's just a temporary fix. So if the beliefs really are going to change in a good way, and when we say good way, we mean in a way hopefully beneficial to relationships, because that's what we talk about on Relationship Radio, then it's like rather than trying to change that person, I need to change me so that I can become a greater influence because the stronger my influence, the more I can affect what they believe. And what they believe then will affect what they value. Now, could that be used for evil? Sure. 
sometimes we see somebody who is really bad, controlling, manipulative, and, and out to use people rise yeah. to the top. That yeah. changes that person's belief system, which changes that person's value system, and that person winds up having many good things in their lives destroyed. Yeah. So the same principle can work on the bad side as right. something rising up here. That's how cults happen. That's how cults happen. Sure, cults. Mm-hmm. And, and it's how all kinds of things can happen, like uh, whoever or whatever has the greatest influence on me is no longer there. Sometimes people actually think that's void, like there's nothing there. I don't know who I believe. I don't, or who I believe in, I should say. I, I don't know who I can trust, etc. And then when that happens, beliefs just go into a major flux. Mm. And so today they believe that, and tomorrow they believe that. And the values go into a major flux. Like today I can mm-hmm. sift cocaine, tomorrow it's like, how dare anybody do that? And the day after that I'm drunk. So if there's a void up here, this all gets messed up. Mm. What we then say to you is, Rather than trying to judge the other person, which is not going to get you anywhere, try to control their behavior, which can have short-term good effect, what you have to do is become the person they will look to as having the strongest influence. In other words, you love me. I know that you do even when you don't like what I do. You listen to me even when you think that what I'm saying doesn't make any sense. You truly listen anyway and, and get that position. And that's what we talk about in nearly everything we do, how you change you. Yeah. I'm still wondering if I've made this much too complex. Well, I mean, yes, it's complex, but it the human mind is complex and why people make the decisions they make is never straight and narrow. <laughs> no, it's always got some complications. We would love, for example, if you guys are in a situation where you think, I want to become that person because I don't know who my spouse is right now, or I don't know who I am right now, then we would recommend that you contact us and, and look into our three-day intensive workshop. Now, I don't spend the whole three days, nor whoever's leading that workshop doesn't spend the whole three days talking about what we just talked about. But we do insert it here, there, and everywhere all through the three days until finally it just makes a lot of sense. Oh, I see that. And we can't teach you here in 15 minutes what we can teach you there in three days. And so, Kimberly, if they are interested in that three-day workshop, what do they do? Best thing to do is go to marriagehelper.com slash workshops. If you're watching this on YouTube or even as a podcast, you can get that link in the show notes as well. And there you will find out more about our workshops as well as a way to contact a client representative to get more information and have a conversation of how to make the workshop the best next step for you. And we believe it is the best first step for every person or every couple that we work with because its success rate is unmatched in what we do and how we do it. Yeah. We teach a tremendous amount of information in a, in a way that's easily understandable and where you're treated with respect and dignity. And so if right now you're not sure what's right or wrong anymore when it comes to your marriage, your relationship, et cetera, we'd like to help you figure that out for you. We won't tell you that you must believe what we believe, but we can help you figure out who is and what is the most important in your life, what beliefs that will lead to and what values that will lead to. Rather than just letting yourself drift and see what's going to happen next, because if you do that, things very important to you will be lost. Don't wait. It won't get better on its own. Let us help you right now. There's several more questions that I have that we don't have the time to get to right now. So here's what here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to continue this conversation in the next episode. But for our listeners, what we talked about today was pretty deep. So if you need to go back and listen to this episode again so that you have a really good grounding of what it is we're discussing. And then next episode, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this and figure out when might the belief change actually happen in people and and relate it to some other research that I've been reading. We'll see what Dr. Joe has to say. Yeah. So re-listen to this one, please. And then be sure to catch the next episode of Relationship Radio.